Summary of Jonathan Livingston Siegel by Richard Bach Jonathan Livingston Siegel is not the same as the other birds in his flock. Most gulls only know the simplest facts of flight, and they use flight as a practical way to get around and get food. Jonathan, on the other hand, loves to do gymnastics in the air and see how fast and well he can move. He fights with being different. It makes him sad to let his parents down, and for a moment he thinks about trying hard to fit in with the flock. But after he makes a big step forward in flight and pulls off a difficult dive from 5,000 feet up, he is more driven than ever to spend the rest of his life studying flight. When Jonathan rejoins his flock that night on the beach, he is called into the middle of a council meeting and picked out by the elder gull for shame. He is then kicked out of the flock and sent to the faraway far cliffs. Jonathan had hoped to teach the flock about his new ways of flying and show them how different ways of flying would make it easier to find food in the ocean, but he has come to terms with the fact that he will be on his own for the rest of his life. Jonathan has lived a long but lonely life for a long time. He is flying one night when two bright birds fly up next to him and ask him to join them on a higher level. Up in what Jonathan thinks is heaven, he sees that his body shines in the moonlight, too. His new body flies more steadily and with less effort than his old one did, but it still has its limits. There are a few birds in this new world who believe the same things as Jonathan and want to improve their unique ways of flying. Jonathan trains with a teacher named Sullivan. Sullivan is impressed by Jonathan's skill, speed, and confidence, and he tells Jonathan that he is the best student he's ever had. In his talks with Chang, the elder gull of this new flock, Jonathan learns that he can go beyond the limits of his body if he realizes that perfection comes from being present and knowing that his true nature lives everywhere and at the same time across space and time. In the end, Jonathan learns how to teleport instantly, which even impresses Chang. He then becomes Chang's special student. As Jonathan learns more and more, he can't stop thinking about the world he left behind on Earth. He longs to go back and teach the gulls the lessons he has learned in this new realm. Jonathan goes back to Earth and finds a gull named Fletcher Lind Siegel who has been kicked out of his flock. Jonathan likes the way Fletcher flies, so he offers to teach him if they can one day go back to their flock and teach the things they have learned together. When Fletcher agrees, they start lessons. After three months, Jonathan has gathered a small group of six special students. He teaches them how to fly and gives them mental tasks to help them break free from their bodies. One day, Jonathan tells his students that it's time to share what they've learned with their flock. His kids aren't sure, but they agree to follow him back to where they used to be. When Jonathan and his students show off their flying skills over the water just beyond the shore, the flock ignores them. But slowly, some interested gulls from the flock start coming up to Jonathan and his group and asking to learn how to fly. Even the nervous Terence Lowell gull and the crippled Kirk Maynard gull are brave enough to join Jonathan's group. Soon, hundreds and hundreds of gulls gather every day to hear Jonathan talk about the glory of freedom and the rituals, superstitions, and rules that get in the way of real freedom. Soon, people start saying that Jonathan is a divine bird or even the son of the great gull. Jonathan is upset that the other birds can't just see him as one of them. After Fletcher crashes into a cliff and almost dies, but then comes back to life, the other gulls start to call him a divine gull, too. Jonathan tells Fletcher that it's time for him to move up and that it's up to Fletcher to carry on his work. Fletcher begs Jonathan to stay, but Jonathan starts to glow and rises into the sky. Fletcher is upset, but he is eager to keep teaching what Jonathan taught him. He takes on his new job as Jonathan's old student's new teacher. In the years after Jonathan leaves Earth, Fletcher and his new flock of students move up and down the coast, spreading their lessons to new flocks. As more and more gulls follow Jonathan's advice, a golden age of flight and innovation begins. Fletcher becomes a hero in his own right, but Jonathan has turned into a saint in his absence. As the number of people who follow Jonathan grows, they stop paying attention to what he taught at first and instead focus on how holy Jonathan and his first students were. As Jonathan's first students start to die, 
Their graves turn into shrines where people drop rocks to make themselves look more holy. People get together every week to talk about Jonathan's wonders, but after 200 years, almost no one flies anymore and Jonathan's lessons are only talked about in general terms. Many gulls start to fight against these routines in lectures, and when they try something new by practicing flying, they end up going back to Jonathan's original goal for his flock and for everyone else, to grow as a person by pushing their physical limits in flight. Anthony Siegel, a young gull, thinks that everyone around him is full of lies and empty rituals, so he plans to jump out of the sky to end his life. On his way down to the water, though, a shining bird stops him and tells him how good his style and form are. Anthony asks the gull what his name is, and the bird says, John. About the author. Richard Bach was born in Oak Park, Illinois, in the year 1936. Bach's life changed forever after he took his first airplane ride at age 15. He became obsessed with how flight made him feel free. As a young man, Bach was a fighter pilot in the U.S. Navy and the National Guard. After he got out of the service, he kept working as a writer and editor for magazines and companies that focused on flight. Bach's life changed again in 1970 when he sold Macmillan Publishers the draft for a book called Jonathan Livingston Siegel. The book was a big hit and sold more than a million copies just in 1972. Bach wrote more about ideas he touched on in Jonathan Livingston Siegel. In 1977, he released a book called Illusions, The Adventures of a Reluctant Messiah. In 2012, Bach was in an accident while landing his plane. The near-death experience and the four months he spent in the hospital afterward moved him to finish the fourth part of his first book, Jonathan Livingston Seagull, which he hadn't been able to finish before the accident. The new, complete version came out in 2013. After his accident, Bach also wrote a companion to Illusions, which included stories from his healing. Bach's writing is mostly about the freedom of flight and the joys of spiritualism. His real-life experiences often show up in one way or another in his writings. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.